It's Tuesday, July 12th. We just arrived in Washington, D.C. Coming from Virginia the day before. Actually, this is partially still in Virginia.、It's、this is the Arlington National Cemetery. Yes, and we were going to go in and get a tour, but it was just too hot to go out and、uh, go. So instead, we settled on going straight to our hotel from this point and、uh, hopefully book a tour of、uh, the monuments by moonlight for tonight. But on our way to our hotel, we can see a few of the monuments. Here is the Lincoln Memorial, actually. We didn't really know our bearings at this point, and we weren't too familiar with any of these monuments much or、uh, statues. This is the Washington Monument. Washington Monument. So, this mall is a huge strip that actually、uh, is all aligned with each other. So, here is the Homewood Suites. And it's right on New York and Fifth. It's a pretty good location. It's not too far from most of those places, about a 15 minute walk from the White House. And it's a pretty spacious、um, area that we were in. It was first hard to find parking at the beginning. Yes,、yeah, so、it had to be valeted in by their parker. But we didn't know where to unload our luggage. But we were able to get a trolley, and so we're going in. Try to push it in. All our luggage there. And our room was, was nice. It was bigger than New York. And at this point, I think the boys are just always concerned if it's bigger than New York. Bigger than the Edison Hotel. Yeah. So、uh, it had two double beds, though, but it's a spacious enough room that、uh, over to the other side of it was a living space with a sofa bed. And this is the view. It kind of looks up, but you can't really see much from where the monuments would be. No. But we were on the ninth floor, so we had a pretty nice view over top. Yeah. And that's New York. And this is, it's not finished yet, but that's what Tristan was working on. So, this is the next day, July 13th, and they're having breakfast before our excursion.、Uh, the night before, we didn't end up getting to the tour because it rained torrentially. We were just able to get some Papa John pizzas for dinner. Yes. So, here we are walking towards the White House, and、uh, it's really just diagonal straight down through New York Avenue. We don't actually see the White House, but towards that direction. Right, right. And this used to be the、uh, Carnegie Library, and now it's an Apple store. We didn't get to go inside, it was closed. Yeah, it was too early in the morning. We started off quite early, I think, this morning. Yeah. And、uh, we we're just taking all these shots of the different beautiful buildings that they had created from years back. A lot, of, a lot of the big buildings were white. Marble. I guess marble. Marble or whatever sandstone that they had, but mostly marble. And this is us just walking、uh, again towards that area that would be the、um, building of commerce and trade and also the White House. We were on New York Street. I noticed that a lot of the streets were named after states. So there was Pennsylvania, there was Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And then some of the streets were named after letters. Yes,、yeah, so letter H, I mean, street H or I or J. And also then we have the numbers because we were on New York and Fifth. So that was, that was interesting. Yeah, so here we're just passing over this、um, statue. I didn't know him,、uh, Albert Galanti. And I didn't know who those guys were either. I didn't get a chance to look. But this was the. Metropolitan Bank that was also helped set up by、uh, Alexander Hamilton. And this is Alexander Hamilton. So it's actually cool that we can tie up all of these、uh, histories and these figures from the past based on the fact that the boys know Alexander the musical,、Al、Hamilton the musical very well. And so here we're just walking towards the mall now. I thought that was the White House. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't the White House. They, they had all these、uh, arrows to the White House, but it's just so far, like it's so fenced in that it's actually very far for us to get through. We didn't get a chance to buy tickets. I don't think tickets are being sold at the moment still to go into the White House. There's the Washington Monument. So, yeah, we kept walking until we reached the Washington Monument. It's quite a very high obelisk structure, and it was actually finished in two different time frames. That by the time they actually finished it, there was a different Um, shade of gray for the quarry. Yes. They, they,、uh, the quarry that they were mining the stones or the rocks in, it ran out of that quarry. And so by the time they finished it, it was actually two shades of gray. And apparently, through the years, it's dropped two inches. Yes. But it'll take eons before it actually drops into the ground. Yeah, before it disappears. Impossible. So it's actually huge. There's a huge rotunda around it to walk to it. We didn't go closer to it at this point, but we decided instead to walk towards the other monuments. Completed in 1884. And I remember one of the、um, lyrics from Hamilton the Musical was、uh, Eliza Hamilton saying that she raised funds for the Washington Monument. 
So Washington the man, again, was the first president of the United States of America. And of course, he was um, instrumental in the leadership aspect of the United States of America after winning the American Revolution from the British. He could have crowned himself king or emperor the way Napoleon had, but instead he wanted a more democratic uh, kind of government where another president would take over in his stead. And here is the U.S. Capitol building. The ne- tomorrow, the, the next day, we will visit that. Right. So again, this mall is one huge long strip of all these monuments in line with each other. This is the Eisenhower building. They're so beautiful. And this is the White House. Yep. So we actually ended up passing most of these monuments once again um, when we were doing the tour on the bus. The night tour. So this is a quick map of the mall, as they call it. So again, the monument, uh, Washington Monument in line with the Lincoln Memorial, which is then going to be in line with the Capitol towards the right hand side over there. So we were able to do half of that mall from the Washington Memorial to Lincoln Memorial in one day and the other part of it, the Capitol, the following day. Here is World War II Memorial. So this is all in a park. Uh, we walk just the sidewalks that they have or the trail that they have through it. And, and you can see Lincoln Memorial. That's right. So the World War II Memorial honors and pays tribute to those who've given up their lives during the World War II, both and there's, men and women. You can see the pillars there, Guam, District of Columbia. So there's 56 pillars here, 50 for the states, and I guess six for the other dist- areas. Yes. Marine Corps. And here we have Coast Guard. And then they had also a wall of stars where one star Marines. was equivalent to... I'm, I forget what the stars were X for. X number of... Um, Navy. Of those who passed away. Yes. And here's just another view. You can see the Washington Monument. At a distance now because we're now we're in between that and the Lincoln Memorial. And then you're just going to see some... Uh, are these considered sculptures? They're reliefs, they're reliefs if they're on a wall like this, like a scene on a wall is yeah. a relief. Just their scenes from battle, scenes from industry, scenes from preparing for the war. But it was very um, calm. It's a peaceful area. There were enough tourists out there and it was very hot this day. But again, it, anybody who comes into the memorials, it's uh, they, everybody goes quiet and respectful. Yeah, and in the middle there was a nice fountain. And on one side it said Pacific, the other side it said Atlantic. I'm not sure what that represented. I was guess it, it the means oceans? from yeah, ocean to ocean. The war is really Pacific. Dumb. Yeah. And are those eagles inside? Mm-hmm. The Battle of Midway, June fourth, forty-two. I mean, yeah, June fourth to seven. And so they're again just all their different points of battle, and then to the war's end. There's the fountain in the middle. And I wasn't sure about the wreaths. I didn't get a close look at them if they were sculpted wreaths. They must have. They look Those must have been gold. I mean, uh, copper bronze. or bronze at one point. And then they got weathered green. Right. So all the states, all the countries that were part and affected by the war and who were allies of the United States of America during that war period. And the Atlantic side. And these are very big sculptures. What we didn't get to go initially here was the Vietnam Memorial War, which is actually a little bit off to the right. But when we did end up going up during the night tour, it's actually a very long wall of all the names listed of those who fell during the Vietnam War. Yeah. And again, it was a very humbling, sobering experience to have gone through there. So there's a lot of beautiful uh, tribute, how the United States pays tribute to their fallen, to those who provided us the opportunity to live in freedom. Victory in the air, victory at sea, victory on land. And I think that's just a year, 41 to 45. So we walked along uh, the shaded pathway here towards the Lincoln Memorial. Um, this is a pool that's about uh, it's called the Reflection Pool, about 900 meters long. And it leads to the Lincoln Memorial, where not only is it a tribute to Abraham Lincoln, the president who freed 
uh, United States from slavery, but it was also the site for a uh, speech by Martin Luther King years yes. later, the I Have a Dream speech on those steps. So these are the uh, states that were um, part of the United States when Abraham Lincoln was in service. Yes. And of course, that was a huge um, uh, issue, slavery this is during just that time period. the walk yeah. all the way up. I think there were 58 steps altogether, they said, from this base to the very top. And the top here looks like more marble than cement. And once you get there, you see that he is seated peacefully in this uh, enclosure. And he is out looking towards the Washington Monument because actually Washington was the first president who also wanted to free slaves. And upon Washington's death, he freed the slaves that he had under his uh, uh, property. But not any other president did so until Abraham Lincoln. What is written here again? Um, his speech from his second um, yes. presidential acceptance. And the other wall was about the uh, freeing of the slaves. Yep. Four scores and seven years ago. Yes. So again, it's beautifully historic. And again, beautiful tribute to this president. From this distance, we can also then look out as he is gazing. The statue is gazing towards Washington Memorial right there. It's a good view. It is. So dramatic. And you can see the reflection pool. So there is a reflection. Yes, but it is a very, again, a different contrast when you see this again at nighttime. So here is the Korean War Veterans Memorial. We walked over it just to the right facing the Washington Monument over from the Lincoln Memorial. And all the countries involved. And the Korean War was fought between 1950 and 1953, I believe. And uh, I'm not too versed in the details of it. So it's, again, one thing that I feel uh, is lacking in my own history knowledge, but I will definitely read up on it. But I, actually, they announced, too, that soon enough, there's going to be also another wall similar to the Vietnam Memorial Wall, where they're going to actually have inscribed all of the names of those who fought for the Korean War during this time period. So that's going to be over to the left, I believe. There was an area there beyond the pool that they have a walls and walls where the soldiers' names and those who served will be um, inscribed by the end of the summer. And this was, was I like this, the, the, the sculptures statues, and yeah. statues of the soldiers, the soldiers as they are trying to, of course, walk into battle. It's actually a hill, so they're walking up a hill. Yeah. And so it's pretty dramatic when you when you look at these life-size sculptures, um, and you know we can't even imagine the losses when you see these numbers: dead, missing, captured. And war is nobody likes war. War separates everything. And there's a beautiful statement here too, saying freedom is not free. And I thought that that was very on point. So there's names so, here yeah, as well. Yeah, those are names, but they haven't unveiled it yet. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's it's this still yeah, it's still not not something that um, the public can go. It's fenced off. And look into. Yes, that's right. They're about to um, unveil it. I think at the end of this month. And so these are again. That's cool. So here's another memorial, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. And it's again we're back walking towards. I guess that would be the east. And again, very. Dramatic. We have these two rocks. I can't remember the symbolism. One was like fortitude. And Martin Luther King is carved into this main rock. Yeah, on the other side. And there. I didn't even know until I saw. I'm like, oh, okay. And there's a, this sentence here: "Out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope." And around the perimeter of this uh, memorial were all of his. Uh, quotes that he used to inspire people as he was trying to bring about his lessons or his his. So here it is, and I think they said he was holding his speech yeah. in his hand there. And he looks out towards Thomas Jefferson's memorial. Yeah. Which will be across this uh, pond. This is called the tidal basin, the water that is uh, that these memorials are around. 
and that is the Thomas Jefferson Memorial that Martin Luther is looking out across. So here again we have the Washington Monument off to one side and just a pool of water. The tidal basin and right over to its left will be the so Thomas here's Jefferson. another memorial, Franklin D. Roosevelt yeah. Memorial. On route to the Jefferson, we didn't realize that there were these uh, different segments of a tribute to, to Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was the longest serving president. So this memorial is split into four sections, each one for a different term that he, yeah. he served. So actually, the last term that he served, he passed away just months after. Um, he accepted the last service, but he led the people of the United States of America through the Great Depression and World War I. And so one of his famous quotes, of course, is there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And all the memorials have several of his famous quotes um, in inscribed on those rocks and stones. It's and a nice waterfall lots there. Lots of water again. That There's a few, wa a few waterfalls in mm -hmm. this memorial. Here's a second term. And this was about the Great Depression when people were hungry. Yes. And so we have this statue of a couple here as they're hungry. And there's also another... Is this uh, a lineup to yeah, get food? to get food, to get rations, to get food. And people were jobless, so they were looking for jobs as well. But everybody was grim and uh, it was depressing. Yeah. So just again, um, you know, he had to uplift people during this time and try to be inspiring to them to move forward and to, to look forward. Here's another one. Listening to the radio. Yeah. And so for the longest time, the United States of America did not want to be part of the World War. Um, and he I wasn't was, sure what this, these I were. I wasn't sure either. But he was actually secretly sending resources to Great Britain who oh, was okay. part of the war. And only when the Japanese bombed Hawaii did the U.S. finally committed themselves to war. But they didn't want to be part of war because he had served in World War One, and that was one of his famous quotes: "I hate war. I have seen what it does." These stones represent. Something. They represent the the destruction of what war can bring. Like everything is in topsy turvy and it's a turmoil. And here we see him. He had polio, which was a viral disease that again affected his um, motor skills. And they said he's hiding his leg. Yes, the leg that was most affected. But towards the end of his life, he actually couldn't walk anymore. And that's why he was in a wheelchair in one of the earlier statues that we saw. And his fourth term? His fourth term was short-lived um, only because, again, he passed away just months after he was re-elected. And this is a statue of his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt. And fun fact, she is one of she is the tallest president, one of three. Five, at five eleven, her at 5 11. and Michelle Obama. And one more. I think it was only two. It was three. Oh. On the bus tour. And here is another fountain, and the gift shop. Yeah. So this is how his chair looked like, his wheelchair then, just to help him move around. And again, they had uh, basically those uh, four different part monuments in miniature here with their explanations as well yep. to get a better look of it and a better explanation of it. But that was also showing the time period of his term in office as president. But it was nice to have these little gift shops because they were just a reprieve from the hot day that's outside. It was a nice little air conditioned spot with um, some water, although we did bring our own water with us. And then the next truck over to towards Jefferson Memorial. We are here. And so this is the Potomac River. And actually parts of this land was reclaimed. They had mentioned towards the White House a long time ago, the Potomac River was actually, has actually submerged all this land. So they had to dredge it. But before we go to Thomas Jefferson, we find another memorial for George Mason. George Mason. And he wasn't he, a president. He wasn't a president, but he was also one of the fathers of revolution with a of course, shared vision for equality, shared vision for setting people free. Yes. So but, he has a nice little spot here. Yep. Yeah. And he liked to read a lot and he was also an advisor in the council for the president, George Washington, back in the day. But it's a nice peaceful spot here. And it's interesting because we, we get to learn more about these different figures of history and how everybody ties in. And uh, I try to read books up before we get to these statues. So I was reading a book on George Washington and so many facts again to read up on. But yeah, George Mason played a 
valuable role for towards independence. So we finally made it to the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. It was under renovation yes. in the front. So we had to walk all the way around towards the uh, water's edge and that was where the in, um, entry was. So here are the improvements that they're going to make. They're actually going to have some retail at the bottom there. Oh, okay. And yeah. this is one of the more majestic looking ones to me anyways. It's like in a temple, like in a Greek temple. And it's probably my favorite design okay. of all of the uh, different memorials. It really lights up at nighttime. Yeah. And so yes, we highly recommend people getting the tour. Here's the walk up. A lot of steps again. And we see Thomas Jefferson. And he is, of course, um, a very the third large, president. Yep, large figure towards America's independence and plays a huge part in the American Revolution through his words. Um, his uh, personal library is actually in the Library of Congress. It's uh, dedicated there at this point. But his figure here is uh, surrounded by his words that he shared during his lifetime and all of the the things that he's written. He he was quite prolific in how in the things that he wrote about freedom and the rights for all. He, it's one of the places that we didn't get a chance to go to his uh, estate in Monticello in Virginia just because it was out of the way, but that's something that I would like to go visit one day in the future. So just so, posing by the statue. It's a very stately sort of statue. And again, it's looking towards the Washington Monument. So here we're walking up again on 15th Avenue. So that's the engraving of yes, the money. Yes, where you make money. That's one spot here and the other one is in Fort Worth. This is the uh, Museum of Holocaust. And if we, you notice, we just passed by a house that's upside down, that block. And actually, it's a symbol of how, again, the Holocaust, this time of the history period is so dark and grim, but it actually appended everybody's houses, homes, right? We were just looking for the cafe just to get um, extra hydration, but uh, that didn't work out. So we kept walking towards the National Museum of African History and Culture. And this is a very cool looking museum. Very ornate. Um, and it is one of the Smithsonian Museum where it is free to go inside. However, we didn't realize this in particular was a timed entry so we needed to actually have booked our time yep. of entry before uh, even coming in as you notice there's no lines because again they're still trying to ensure that everybody goes in uh, spaced out but it's the newest one it is the newest one i think 2016 was mm -hmm. when it was um raised up so we just kept trying to walk up the street here because um, we are on our way for lunch uh, in a bit at the old Ebbett Saloon, which is the oldest saloon in Washington DC But yep. first we're just passing all these other different sculpt um, other buildings that were also made and again I can't imagine how all this building happened in Washington DC how everything was laid out the uh, initial uh, architect is actually from France and he had proposed to George Washington then who was the president how Washington should be laid out 